This river in Ghana was DYing. Communities depended on it to survive, but every year it disappeared faster. It seemed like there was no solution. Then they discovered something so simple it sounds almost impossible. In just five years, everything changed. This is the story of how the right trees, planted in the right places, are bringing life back to a river that seemed doomed. Northern Ghana is a tropical savanna, a delicate ecosystem that harbors unique wildlife, mammals like the cob, a variety of endemic birds, and plants found nowhere else in the world. The Dhaka River flows through this region. Like all rivers in tropical savannas, it is the lifeline of everything around it. But the Dhaka River is in trouble, and it is not alone. Around the world, rivers like this are at risk of drying out completely. Deforestation and climate change are accelerating a process that would naturally take centuries. In Yendi, the region where the Dhaka flows, rural communities depend entirely on agriculture for their livelihood. For decades, large areas have been deforested to make space for crops and animal grazing. It is a decision that makes sense in the short term. Families need to eat and they need land to cultivate. But in the long term, this practice has triggered a crisis that threatens the very existence of the river. Agriculture is happening right next to the Dhaka River, with no vegetation acting as a natural barrier between the fields and the water. This creates a critical problem. When the intense tropical rains that characterize this region arrive, the force of the water drags soil directly into the river. Without roots to hold the soil in place, sediments flow uncontrolled. Rivers can change and erode naturally as currents displace sediments, but those changes normally occur over long periods of time. What's happening in the Dhaka is different. The changes have been dramatically accelerated by human activity. Eventually, the river fills with so much sediment that what little water remains simply evaporates under the high temperatures. The result is a river that used to flow year-round and now dries completely for months. By September, after the rainy season, the Dhaka is reduced to scattered patches, isolated pools where a continuous river once flowed. For the communities that depend on this water, this represents an existential crisis. But there is a solution, and it has a technical name, riparian buffers. A riparian buffer is essentially an area of vegetation strategically planted along riverbanks. But it is not simply about planting trees randomly. The effectiveness of a riparian buffer depends on precise science, which plants are chosen, where they are located, and how they are managed. Since 2018, Akosia and its local partner TreeAid have been implementing exactly this solution on the Dhaka River. More than 4 million trees have been planted or naturally regenerated as part of this project. Trees are planted at a specific distance, between 60 and 100 meters from the riverbank. This creates a protection zone where vegetation acts as a natural filter. When intense rains arrive, the roots of these trees hold the soil in place. Sediments no longer wash into the river. Erosion stops. But the benefit goes far beyond simply preventing erosion. If farmers are using chemical fertilizers on their farms, which are now located farther from the river, those fertilizers do not reach the water either. Riparian buffers act as natural filters, capturing nutrients and sediments before they can contaminate the river. The Dhaka riparian buffer is not a uniform zone. It is designed as a three-tier system, each zone with a specific purpose. Tier 1, from 0 to 30 meters from the bank. This is the maximum protection zone. No disturbance is allowed. No agriculture, no extraction. Only natural vegetation growing without human intervention. It is the river's first line of defense. Tier 2, from 30 to 60 meters. Here begins the managed forest zone. Some human intervention is allowed, including small vegetable gardens, controlled planting, and sustainable resource use. It is a transition space where human needs and environmental protection coexist. Tier 3, from 60 to 90 meters. This is the full cultivation zone. Farmers can continue with their normal activities, planting, harvesting, and grazing. Even here, tree planting and farmer-managed natural regeneration continue to occur. This three-tier design achieves something critical, 
It balances river protection with the economic realities of local communities. Farmers are not asked to completely abandon the land. They are shown how to use it sustainably. The benefits of riparian buffers go far beyond preventing erosion. Protection against eutrophication. When too many fertilizers enter a river, they cause a process called eutrophication. Excessive nutrients trigger uncontrolled algae growth. These algae deplete oxygen from the water, creating a domino effect that collapses the entire aquatic ecosystem. Riparian buffers prevent this scenario by filtering nutrients before they reach the water. Temperature regulation. Plants along the river create shade as the canopy grows. This shade cools and stabilizes water temperature. And this matters deeply. Abrupt changes in water temperature reduce biodiversity because they alter dissolved oxygen levels. Many species of fish and invertebrates can only survive within very specific temperature ranges. Studies show that just 30 meters of vegetation on each side of a river can keep water temperature as stable as if the river flowed through a massive forest. Habitat for aquatic life. When leaves, branches, and other organic matter fall into the river, it's not garbage, it's essential habitat. Fish, invertebrates, and microorganisms all depend on this organic matter for food and shelter. Wildlife corridors. Riparian buffers also function as natural highways for wildlife. They allow animals to move safely through areas that would otherwise be dominated by human development. Protection of downstream water bodies. The Dhaka River eventually flows into a lake in southern Ghana. By keeping the Dhaka free of pollution, riparian buffers also protect that lake and all the ecosystems that depend on it. River protection is never an isolated act. It's an investment in an entire hydrological network. This is one of the project's most mature buffer zones. Five years after planting began, the transformation is remarkable. The canopy is already closing. The temperature under these trees is significantly cooler than in the surrounding open areas. In 2018, this area was bare land. Today, it is a young, vibrant forest. Most revealing, children from local communities can now swim in this river again. That was not possible when the water was reduced to puddles for most of the year. This is the simplest and most powerful indicator of success, a river that once again sustains life year-round. But it is important to be clear, riparian buffers are not a perfect or universal solution. Some studies have shown that certain types of vegetation fail to filter all contaminants. Some pesticides can still pass through, even well-designed buffers. Buffer effectiveness depends on multiple factors. Buffer width, total length covered, how far upstream it is implemented, which plant species are included, the underlying soil type, terrain slope. And there's another important reality, buffers only work if they are implemented consistently along the entire river. In the Dhaka's case, some upstream communities have not yet adopted these practices, so sediments and contaminants still enter the water in those sections. The complete solution requires coordination at the entire watershed level. And finally, riparian buffers are only part of the solution. It is also necessary to minimize pollution at its source. This means reducing chemical fertilizer use, adopting more sustainable agricultural practices, and fundamentally changing how communities interact with the land. Trees alone cannot solve problems created by fundamentally unsustainable agricultural systems. So what makes this project work where others have failed? The answer lies in how TreeAid and Ecosia have approached the human component. Instead of simply planting trees and hoping communities will protect them, the project integrates local economic needs into the buffer design itself. The trees planted are not just for restoration. Many are productive species, Moringa and Shea. These species produce highly nutritious nuts and leaves, products that communities can consume or sell in local markets. Before, women had to walk many kilometers to collect these resources. Now they have them in their own backyard. TreeAid also provides extensive training. Farmer manage natural regeneration techniques, agroforestry practices, using natural fertilizers instead of chemicals, improved soil management methods, the project is testing innovative technologies, like converting grass into cooking briquettes. This reduces the need for wood for fuel,
decreasing pressure on forests. In 2018, community testimonies revealed that after the rainy season in September, November, and December, the river would dry completely. Only isolated patches remained. This was the same river that households depended on. Women had to walk long distances to fetch water. Five years later, the change has been massive. Trees are growing along the river. Natural regeneration is helping the river maintain water year-round. Now families have enough water for their homes and even to irrigate vegetable gardens. Five years. That's what it took to transform a dying river into a functional system. It's not an instant change, but it's a measurable, verifiable, and sustainable change. The most important lesson from the Dhaka River project is not just about hydrology or forestry. It is about the fundamental philosophy of ecosystem restoration. You cannot protect an ecosystem without considering the people who depend on it. You cannot ask communities to abandon practices that feed them without offering viable alternatives. And you cannot expect a project to survive long term if it does not generate tangible benefits for the people who must maintain it. The Dhaka Riparian Buffer 3 tier system works precisely because it recognizes these realities. Total protection near the river. Managed use in the intermediate zone. Full agriculture in the outer zone. It is not a compromise. It is intelligent design that recognizes environmental sustainability and human food security are not opposing goals. They are two sides of the same coin. And when you design solutions that address both needs, you create systems that local communities have real incentives to maintain. That is the difference between a project that lasts five years and one that lasts 50. Restoring river ecosystems is not easy. It requires financial investment, community coordination, continuous education, and time. But the Dhaka River demonstrates it is possible. With the right trees planted in the right places, managed by the right communities, a dying river can come back to life. Sediments stabilize, pollution is filtered, temperature is regulated, biodiversity returns. And most importantly, the communities that depend on the river have clean water year-round. That is the true measure of success. Not just trees planted or kilometers of buffer created, but water flowing where there was nothing before. Life thriving where everything was dying. The Dhaka River is being saved, one tree at a time, one community at a time. And the formula that is working here can be replicated in at-risk rivers around the world.